Hello and welcome to the next video in the A-Level Biology series. In this video, we will complete control and communication with muscle contraction. As covered briefly before, muscles receive the communication to contract from the nervous system. Now let's recap the neuromuscular junction. The neuromuscular junctions, or NMJ, are synapses between a motor neuron and a muscle cell. The NMJ uses neurotransmitter acetylcholine, which binds to cholinergic receptors called nicotinic cholinergic receptors. The NMJ passes electrical impulses, or an action potential, from the motor neuron to the muscle, triggering muscle contraction. There are three types of muscle in our bodies. Cardiac, which is the heart muscle. Smooth muscle, which our body organs are formed from. And skeletal, also known as striated, striped or voluntary muscle. And these are used to move the bones. Skeletal muscles are attached to bones by tendons. Skeletal muscles act in antagonistic pairs. These pairs of skeletal muscle contract and relax to move bones at the joint, treating the bone as a lever. The contracting muscle is known as the agonist and the relaxing muscle is known as the antagonist. So for example, biceps and triceps muscles are attached by tendons to the bones of the lower arm and control movement. One relaxes while the other contracts. When the bicep contracts while the triceps relaxes, this pulls the lower arm up, bending at the elbow. When the triceps contracts and the biceps relax, the arm straightens or extends at the elbow. Muscles act as effectors and are stimulated to contract by neurons in the neuromuscular junction. Skeletal muscles are made up of bundles of long cells called muscle fibres or myofibres. Muscle cells have some key defining characteristics. The cell membrane is called the sarcolemma and the cytoplasm is called sarcoplasm. Parts of the sarcolemma fold inwards and are called traverse or T-tubules and create a large surface area to help spread electrical impulses across the muscle fibre. Muscle cells also contain sarcoplasmic reticulum, which is a network of internal membranes within the sarcoplasm. The sarcoplasmic reticulum stores and releases calcium ions required for muscle contraction. Muscle cells are multinucleate, which means they contain lots of nuclei. Muscles contain lots of mitochondria, as large amounts of energy are required for muscle contraction. Within myofibres are long cylindrical organelles called myofibrils. Myofibrils are highly specialised for contraction and contain bundles of protein filaments thick myosin and thin actin filaments. Myofibrils are made up of short units of myosin and actin arranged into structures called sarcomeres. Myosin and actin move past each other to make muscles contract. The sarcomere structure consists of the Z-line, which marks the ends of the sarcomere, the M-line, which is in the middle of the sarcomere, H-zone, where there is only myosin within the centre of the sarcomere, an A-band, which is where myosin and actin overlap, and the I-band, in which there is only actin. The movement of actin and myosin is described by the sliding filament theory. 
Myosin and actin slide over each other to make the sarcomeres contract. The simultaneous contraction of the sarcomeres means the myofibrils contract, and so the muscle fibres contract, and movement is generated. When muscles contract, the actin and myosin filaments slide over each other. This makes the sarcomere shorter. The filaments themselves do not change in length. When the muscle relaxes, the myosin and actin slide apart and the sarcomere gets longer. Myosin filaments have globular heads with two binding sites, one for ATP and one for actin. Myosin heads are hinged, so they move back and forth, allowing it to slide the actin filaments closer. Actin filaments have binding sites which bind myosin, called actin-myosin binding sites. In resting conditions, the binding site is blocked by two proteins called tropomyosin and troponin. When relaxed, tropomyosin covers the actin-myosin binding site and is held there by troponin. So how do we convert an action potential into muscle contraction? First, an action potential from a motor neuron stimulates the muscle cell. A wave of depolarization passes along the sarcolemma and down the T-tubules. This stimulates the sarcoplasmic reticulum to release calcium ions. Calcium ions bind to troponin, causing it to change shape and release tropomyosin from the actin-myosin binding site. Now that the actin-myosin binding site is exposed, the myosin head can bind to actin to form the actin-myosin cross bridge. The release of calcium ions activates ATPase, which catalyzes the hydrolysis of ATP into ADP and inorganic phosphate. The energy released is used by the myosin head to move backwards. This movement causes actin to be pulled closer to the myosin in a rowing action referred to as a power stroke. ATP hydrolysis provides the energy to detach the actin-myosin cross bridge, so the myosin head can reattach to a binding site further along the actin filament. This process is repeated, pulling the actin further and further towards the myosin filament. This shortens the sarcomere and results in muscle contraction. When the muscle stops being stimulated, Calcium ions return to the sarcoplasmic reticulum by active transport, which requires ATP. Troponin returns to its original shape and pushes tropomyosin into the actin-myosin binding site. Myosin and actin can no longer bind, so they slide back into their original resting position. The sarcomere lengthens and the muscle relaxes. Muscle contraction requires a lot of energy. ATP and phosphocreatine provide energy for muscle contraction. Contraction requires a lot of energy, so ATP needs to be continually generated. There are three ways for this. One is aerobic respiration. This requires high level of oxygen for long periods, so it's good for low intensity exercise. Two, anaerobic respiration. This is the conversion of glycogen into pyruvate and further fermentation into lactate. Lactate builds up in muscles leading to muscle fatigue. This is good for short bursts of intense exercise. Three, the ATP phosphocreatine system. The phosphate group from phosphocreatine or PCR is added to ADP to produce ATP and creatine. This occurs in the absence of oxygen.
or anaerobic conditions. PCR is stored in cells and generates ATP rapidly. Creatine can be broken down into creatinine and removed via the kidneys. PCR runs out after a few seconds, so is good for short bursts of exercise. Skeletal muscle fibres are made up of fast and slow twitch muscle fibres. Different muscles in the body have different proportions of fast and slow twitch muscle fibres depending on where they are and what they are used for. So first, slow twitch muscle fibres. These contract slowly. They are in the muscles used for posture, for example in the back. They are good for endurance, such as posture, sitting straight and long distance running. They work for a long time without fatiguing. And energy is released slowly with aerobic respiration, lots of mitochondria and blood vessels for oxygen. These muscles appear red as they are rich in myoglobin, which stores oxygen. Fast twitch muscle fibers. These contract fast they are found in muscles for fast movement, for example, in the eyes and legs. They are good for short bursts of speed and power. They tire easily. Energy is released quickly under anaerobic respiration using glycogen. They contain fewer mitochondria and blood vessels. They do not have much myoglobin and cannot store much oxygen, and they appear white. Now to summarise what we've learned. Muscles are linked to the nervous system by the neuromuscular junction, a cholinergic synapse between a motor neuron and a muscle cell. Skeletal muscles are made up of long cells called muscle fibres. Muscle fibres are made up of myofibrils. Myofibrils are made up of short units called sarcomeres, which consist of two protein filaments, a thin actin filament and a thick myosin filament. Action potentials reaching the muscle cells causes calcium ions to be released from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Calcium ions expose the actin-myosin binding site on the actin filament, allowing myosin heads to bind. Hydrolysis of ATP provides the energy for the power stroke, which causes the rowing action in which myosin and actin slide along each other. The actin-myosin cross bridges form and reform along the actin filament causing filaments to be pulled further along, causing the muscle to contract. Muscles contain different proportions of slow and fast twitch muscle fibres depending on their function. So this concludes today's video on muscle contraction. Thank you for watching today's video. We hope to see you next week for the next video which will focus on inherited change.